Hey man, what's up? What are you up to? Huh? Oh, just uh, texting a buddy of mine. He wants to know if he should go with the Meeker or the Nanit. Oh yeah? What are you? Uh, what are you suggesting? I'm suggesting the Miku. Miku? Tell him Nanit. It's got that uh, Insights package. That's super dope. Well, that's cool. But the Miku can monitor baby's breathing without the use of any wearables. Nanit can do that too. You still gotta wear this wrap thing in order to be able to do it. Yeah, well, okay, whatever. But tell him to go with the Nanit. It's a better choice. No, I'm, I'm gonna tell him the Miku. No, no, seriously. Tell him to go with the Nanit. No, I'm I'm gonna suggest the Miku. No, no, no. Tell him to go with the Nanit. M Miku. Nanit. Miku. Nanit. Miku. Nanit. Miku. I'll tell you what. I'm gonna take that and shove it right up your face and I'm gonna that thing out of ear lobes and I'm gonna to tell you what I'm gonna do I'm gonna shove them down your into your and I'm gonna make sure that when it it's not gonna look and it's gonna take a second for you to think your faces of your friends kiss your mother with that mouth no all right man I've had enough of this. oh yeah bros bros what is going on in here you're disturbing my beard grooming sesh he started it. Okay, okay. I don't care who started it, but I want you two to apologize to each other right now. Sorry. All right, you? Whatever. Sorry. All right, gnarly, gnarly. Okay, well, let's keep it down. Let's keep it calm. And let's be buds, okay? Okay. If you need me, I'll be in my shed bottling my beard oils. Cool. Check your bros later. coffee's cold. Want to go grab a cup? Hello again everybody, this is John with Fathercraft. And in this video, I'm going to cover everything you need to know when attempting to make that agonizing decision between the Nana Plus and the Miku Baby Monitor. Before we dive in, and believe me, we are going to dive deep into the muck and mire, I wanted to mention that there are some affiliate links to both the Nana Plus and the Miku in the description below. So if you decide to purchase either one of these baby monitors, doing so by clicking those links goes a long way in supporting this channel at no additional cost to you. Uh, an even simpler thing to do if you wanna help us out is by liking and subscribing. So not only does it boost my ego, but it helps other parents find us as well, which I guess is also important. All right, like I said, there's a lot to get to, so let's go ahead and get our hands dirty. The base package of the Nanit Plus starts at 299 bucks and comes with a wall mount and a cord management system that helps keep the cords out of your baby's reach. The Miku starts at 399 bucks and also comes with a wall mount and a cord management system, but you also get this super cute standard screwdriver. Doing some quick math, the Miku is 100 bucks more than the Nanit Plus, and the reason for the rather large price difference most likely has to do with the tech Miku employs allowing it, among other things, to monitor your child's breathing without the use of any wearables, which is honestly quite impressive, but more on that later. Plus, the unboxing experience that comes with the Miku is extremely satisfying, which is hard to quantify monetarily, but nonetheless, still worth noting. Now, this price difference is a bit misleading though, because the Nanit's $299 price tag is where you start. If you want a surface mount option, then purchasing the multi-stand is required, and that's going to cost you an extra 50 bucks. And if you're going to want the Insights feature beyond the first year, you're going to have to pay for it. And it can definitely get pricey, but more on that later as well. Okay, let's talk about build quality. Structurally, both the Miku and the Nana Plus are extremely well built and not at all obtrusive to the eye like many other baby monitors. I'm looking at you, Motorola Halo and Yuffie. Weirdos. We still even have our original Nanit that we bring to the in-laws when we used to see our in-laws in person and had a babysitter to watch the kids and we could do stuff without kids. But regardless, despite its heavy use, it only shows minor signs of wear and tear. Aesthetically, I'd have to give a slight advantage to the Miku because I really dig its rounded contours and matte finish. Uh, unfortunately, neither one of them come in rose gold, which is a sad day for all of us, but we can only hope, I guess. All right, I'm about to spit some technical jargon that I'm barely qualified to even say out loud, but I'm going to speak on it anyway. Looking under the Miku's hood, you'll find a Snapdragon 410 APQ8016 processor, which is actually the same processor used in many smartphones and laptops, so pretty impressive. The biggest reason this kind of tech is necessary, according to Miku, is so that it can perform accurate breathing monitoring by combining three different monitoring methods, 
all without the use of any wearables. Uh, <laughs> but I'll get a little bit more into that in a minute. For those of you at home, those are three things that I'm yet to get to that I've mentioned that I'm gonna get to. So just hold tight. Like I said, there's a lot to go through. But overall, Miku wins out in the straight tech hardware category. Now let's take a look at the camera resolutions between the Miku and the Nanit. And for me, this was a bit odd because on paper, Miku specs should kick Nanit's ass. It's like that person you thought you should date back in the day because they were great on paper, but in person, they weren't. The Miku sports a quarter inch five megapixel sensor and streams video in 1080p HD resolution, whereas the Nanit Plus hovers around 920p, which is still considered HD. Now, despite this, the Nanit Plus picture quality through the app seems to me to provide a clear image as the Miku introduces a fairly noticeable amount of grain in its video feed. The infrared lights are actually visible on the Nanit Plus when the night vision is turned on, which could potentially be distracting to your baby as he's trying to fall asleep at night. With the Miku, the infrared lights are not visible at all, so there's a bit of a choice to consider here. The choice being either go with Miku's inferior night vision image, but no visible infrared lights, or Nanit's superior night vision feed with visible infrared lights on the camera. Both cameras come with a 130 degree field of view with optimized image correction, which helps correct any distortion that may occur due to having such a wide angle of view when viewing the video feed through the app. Nanit's picture quality, despite having uh, poorer specs on paper, is the winner in this department. Comparing the audio between these two monitors can be a bit difficult for a few reasons because there's a couple of things to consider. One, the quality of the audio coming from the app can be affected by the device you're using. So if you have a high-end phone, the quality of the sound will more likely be better than if you were using a much older device. The other thing to consider is the audio output from the monitor itself, either in the form of white noise or your voice via the two-way communication feature. Miku definitely takes the proverbial cake here, mainly because Miku utilizes a dual speaker system, whereas the Nana only has one speaker, and two, because Miku's dual speaker system doesn't just use any old speaker off the street, it uses dual Ole Wolf speakers. So I mean, not only does the name sound foreign, but there are also two Fs in Wolf, so you know they must be high-end speakers. Honestly, what else do you need to know? Okay, putting aside the name stereotypes, to me, the Miku outputs a much clearer audio quality than the Nana Plus. When it comes to mounting, both Nana and Miku have three options, wall mount, surface mount, and floor stand mount. Nana's floor stand stands at 65 inches compared to Miku's 60 inches, so there's a bit of a height difference there. The base of the Nanit's floor stand has a detachable third leg in the event you want to situate the floor stand flush against the wall. The pole of Miku stand is stationed towards the back of its rather sturdy base, which easily slips under a crib or a bed and also sits flush against the wall. The Miku's built-in surface stand easily attaches to the floor stand mount, and the same with the Nanit. Both can easily pop on and off. Now using these floor stands, both monitors can be manipulated into a variety of positions to ensure that every inch of the crib is being captured. Now at the end of the day, some would say that there's a mounting body of evidence that the Nanit and Miku are about equal in this department. All right, let's jump into the apps of both of these monitors and stroll around or scroll around for a bit. In Miku's app, you'll find a background audio option, two-way communication feature, movement and sound alerts, as well as awake and asleep alerts, white noise, and a temperature and humidity display. The white noise feature gives you access to a rather beefy catalog of lullabies and sound options from which you can set a time limit for each option or choose to play your selection indefinitely. Now, when you pair this feature with a dual Ole Wolf system, you may find yourself swaying in the darkness of your baby's room listening to sweet jams because it's not like there's anything better to do right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? <sighs> the app also provides sleep tracking and sleep trends information within the analytics tab. Here, you'll find nighttime and daytime sleep summaries, which details when your baby went to bed, woke up, how much sleep he had at night, and a sleep quality score. Every day you'll see a daily summary that provides details on breathing, temperature, and humidity trends in 30 minute, one hour, four hour, 12 hour, and 24 hour increments. The next tab over is the activity tab, and here you find short video recordings of movement or sound the Miku has captured. These clips can be viewed either as a list or in a timeline view, which in my opinion, makes it a whole lot easier to scrub through to find clips you're looking for. Now, the amazing thing is that this app will store an unlimited amount of photos and videos, and it's the only baby monitor app that I know of that provides this much stored historical information without a subscription. However, without a doubt, in my opinion, and having used both apps for an extended period of time, 
The Nana app is far and away the better app for a number of reasons, but mainly due to the number of useful features it provides. It also is laid out much better, is much more customizable, and it's a much more stable app. There's so many features inside the app that it would require a separate video just to cover them all, but if that's something that you uh, maybe would be interested in, um, let me know in the comments below and I'll you know put something together for you. All right, here's where we're really gonna start getting into the weeds by comparing the differences between the two apps. First, the Nana app is much more customizable and the area with the most amount of customizable options resides in the notification settings. Where the Miku allows you to just simply turn on movement and sound alerts, the Nana app lets you adjust the sensitivity levels of these alerts which will either increase or decrease the number of notifications you receive. Not only can you set the sensitivity level of the movement alerts, you can actually tell the Nana where in the crib or bed you want the camera to focus on to trigger these alerts. So when your daredevil toddler starts to figure out how to climb out of his crib, you can set the motion area to focus on particular areas of the crib he's most likely to escape, so you can be notified when he's attempting to break out. You can also set a crib zone and a parent pickup zone. This lets the Nanit know not to trigger an alert when you or your dog wander into the parent pickup area. And if you want, you can toggle the crib positioning alert that will notify you when the crib is no longer in an optimal position underneath the camera. There are also temperature and humidity alerts that will be triggered if said temperature or humidity goes beyond the ranges you set within the app. Now the feature that has always and continues to be the thing that sets the whole Nanit monitoring system apart from its competitors is its insights feature. Simply put, it's an in-app sleep coach that analyzes your baby's sleep habits and patterns and provides customized feedback on how to ensure your baby is getting the best night's sleep possible. This to me helps take a lot of the guesswork out of why your baby may be struggling to sleep through the night or why she wakes up at certain times every night. And lastly, the app is just far more reliable. It connects super quickly and rarely, I mean rarely, loses connection. Now the biggest standout feature of the Miku is its ability to monitor your baby's breathing without the use of any wearables. Relatively speaking, Nana's breathing monitoring is far more rudimentary, and that's definitely not to say that Nana's method of monitoring breathing is in any way inferior to Miku. That said, monitoring breathing using the Nana Plus does require quite a bit more overhead. First, and most importantly, monitoring breathing using the Nana Plus requires the use of one of their customized sleepwear items either a sleep sack or a belly wrap or one of their new sleeping bags. The sleepwear is patterned with distinct black shapes that the camera locks onto to detect pixel movement. Once the camera analyzes this movement, it can begin to monitor breathing. You have to open the app and you have to manually target the patterns on the sleepwear in order for it to work. On top of that, you have to manually tell the Nana to stop monitoring breathing in the app once your baby wakes up or you take her out of her crib. So like I said, quite a bit of overhead is required here. Now, being able to compare the accuracy of these two monitors when it comes to monitoring breathing is another story. But what I can say, uh, and this comes through personal use and interviewing other families who have used Nanit's breathing monitoring function, is that the experience has been resoundingly positive. That being said, if I had to choose a monitor solely on breathing monitoring functionality, I'd have to go with the Miku. And this is simply just because of how easy it is to use. When it comes to subscription packages, Nanit has a subscription offering uh, and Miku doesn't have any subscriptions. Now with Nanit, their subscription package is called Nanit Insights. So at a high level, this subscription service offers sleep tracking and analysis, personalized sleep tips, saved video history, time-lapse sleep summaries, age-based comparisons, a real-time activity feed, a sleep dashboard, saved memories, and access for additional users to use the app. So there's a lot in the subscription. So there are three tiers to this Nanit Insights package. Nanit Insights, Insights Premium, and Insights Unlimited. The Nanit's Insight package comes free for the first year, but there's an important caveat to this. The sleep analysis that Nana Insight's feature provides doesn't actually start until your baby turns four months old. And this is mainly due to the idea that at four months, your baby, physiologically speaking, has the ability to sleep through the night without needing any nighttime feeds. So although this package is free for the first year, the clock starts ticking as soon as you create uh, your account within the Nanit app. The biggest difference between the three tiers is how long all of the information is stored. You get seven days of history with the base package, which again is free for the first year, and then five bucks a month or $50 a year after that. The Insights Premium Package provides 30 days of history and is offered at 10 bucks a month or $100 a year. And the Insights Unlimited Package, as the name implies, provides unlimited days of historical info for 30 bucks a month or 300 bucks a year. Now, going back to a point I mentioned earlier, these packages are quite expensive. 
The cost of the premium package added to the price of the monitor makes the Nanit just as expensive as the Miku. And if you're doing the math at home, if you subscribe to this package for more than a year, then the Nanit Plus monitoring system becomes more expensive than the Miku. The big and obvious question becomes, are these subscription services worth the price? And I would say yes, at least for the first year. For me, I found that the middle tier where you get the 30 days of historical data at hundred bucks for the first year is totally worth the cost. Again, from my own experience, I relied heavily on the tools offered in the service during the first year of Calvin's life. Having access to all this information took all of the guesswork out of understanding why Calvin struggled to sleep at night, which in turn took a huge weight off my wife's and my shoulders. All right, let's talk accessories. So both the Nanit Plus and the Miku offer several accessories that are worth noting. Most notably for the Miku are the carrying case for 30 bucks and the floor stand for 99 bucks. If I had to choose one accessory to go with, it would definitely be the floor stand. The base of the stand is super solid and sturdy, but still easy enough to move around to get the field of view that works best for you. It also sits super close to the wall, which means that putting it between the crib and the wall isn't an issue at all. Nana offers a travel case for 30 bucks, a floor stand for 125 bucks, and the multi stand for 50 bucks. Now, if you decide to go with only one accessory for the Nana Plus, I highly recommend purchasing the floor stand. The Nana floor stand sits on a tripod mount with the option to remove one of the legs if you want to place the stand flush against the wall. However, I found that removing that leg so it can lean against the wall results in the stand being a little less sturdy than I would like. That being said, the Nanit floor stand is taller than the Miku stand by about five inches and extends out further than the Miku over the crib as well. Now this results in a more centralized placement above the crib, therefore providing a more optimal view and to the crib. Now I fully realize that that was a lot of information to digest, but there are a couple of factors that need to be considered when deciding which one of these monitors to go with. The first of which is the cost factor. Now, if you go with the Miku, I would highly recommend purchasing the floor stand, like I mentioned. So that total price is going to be around 500 bucks. Now, remember with this, you get instant access to breathing monitoring without needing to purchase any sort of wearable. Also, you automatically get access to unlimited historical sleep analysis and video summaries, and you get the built-in surface mount option. So even though the Nana Plus starts at 299 bucks, there are several accessories that you need to purchase in order to have the same sort of functionality that the Miku offers. First of which is the multi-stand at 50 bucks uh, if you wanna have that surface mount option. Now, if you want the breathing monitoring capability, you need to purchase their customized sleepwear items, which starts at 40 bucks. And then purchasing the floor stand is going to add 125 bucks. So altogether, you're looking at around $505. However, to get the same type of unlimited access to historical data, your price tag is going to be closer to $800. Now, you can choose to bundle everything I just mentioned minus the access to unlimited historical data for around 450 bucks. But again, this bundle only includes the base insights package, which provides seven days of historical data. So if you want the unlimited package, it's going to cost you around $750. But in all honesty, I don't think you need anything more than the 30 days of historical data, as I highly doubt you want to scan through months and months of sleep analysis. So Nanit's complete monitoring system with the Insights Premium Package will total around 550 bucks compared to Miku's 500 bucks. But whether you have the seven days of history or the 30 days of history, the extremely valuable tools that the Insights feature offers is something that I can't recommend enough, especially for the first year of your baby's life. That plus Nanit's superior image quality and the reliability continue to make this monitor my top choice over the Miku, but it's still close. I still really enjoy these monitors. Uh, and plus, uh, from my first review of the Miku, the uh, Miku's app has become uh, much more reliable than the previous version. Although there are still some times where connecting is a bit of an issue, but not nearly as much as it was in the past. So again, long story short, you're a bit late for that. They're both great monitors. Uh, that come with excellent features, but I think the Insights package with the Nana is something that for me provides that little extra that I would go with over the Miku. Still confused? Well, I'm not at all surprised, but luckily for you, we've created a super handy infographic guide breaking down not only the features of the Nana Plus and the Miku, but other top Wi-Fi monitors like the Lollipop, the Cubo AI, Owlette, among other monitors as well. On top of that, we've created an in-depth app walkthrough infographic and video guide for the Nana and the Miku. So to get access to all these tools, click this link in the description below and we will hook your ass up. All right, that's all I've got for you today. It was a lot. Uh, I hope you got a lot out of it. Um, let me know if there are any other questions you have in the comments below. 
um, or just uh, let me know how you're doing. I've missed you guys. It's been a while. Uh, that's all I've got for you today. If that wasn't enough, um, let me know in the comments below what I missed. I'd be happy to answer those. Um, also, let me know which of these features makes you lean towards one monitor over the other, or if you have any other questions related to features I mentioned in this video. Also, you know the drill, like and subscribe and all that crap. Okay, people, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.